Hi, everyone. How are you? Hello. Come on, where's the energy? Come on, this is Ooh, music. Thank you. We're going to talk about fun things. Yes. So, you know, we need, uh, we need some energy. Um, so, first of all, I want to say thank you for inviting us here. I think it's really special and important that the Pulse Conference would include the Latin music community, which has had a terrific year, if I do say so myself. Yes, 100%. Um, and, well, let's say years, because we've seen this sort of, you know, rising uh, for some time now. Um, and I do specifically want to say, thank April Barfield, who's running around somewhere, and, uh, of course, Jay Tucker um, for inviting us. And, um, and, well, and I should tell you who I am. Uh, my name is Marjorie Garcia. I'm an entertainment lawyer. I happen to have the pleasure of being Sophia's entertainment lawyer. The best lawyer. lawyer the yeah, the best. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, specializing in music. I've been doing this for some time now um, on the artist side, not as long, uh, but I also was at Universal Latin for six years, uh, and now six and some change now, I guess, uh, doing the artist side, and then a litigator for two. So it's been, it's been a good ride so far. Um, and uh, before I introduce these lovely people, I just wanted to sort of say sort of what we're going to be doing here. Um, how did we get here and what's coming next? In 2019, the RIAA reported double-digit growth driven almost entirely by streaming, 18% which resulted in $413 million in revenues. Also in 2019, Latin music outstreamed country music and EDM which is a huge, huge deal. Uh, and less than a month ago, the eyes of the world were on two very special ladies, Shakira and J-Lo yes. with J Balvin and uh, Bad Bunny. Yes. And that was, I mean, I can't even tell you the excitement in the Latin community for that to happen. Tremendous. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and, and it's not lost on a lot of the Latino community where, you know, sort of in the political sphere, we feel that there's a loss of voice of, of the Latin community. And yet there is much to be hopeful for in the music community. And, um, and what we sort of see, which is the good news, is that cultural changes shape and precede uh, political changes. So we're happy. This is a hopeful moment for all of us. And I want to introduce the people who are next to me who are so special so wonderful. I'm so honored that they would be here with us because one lives in Miami and one does a lot of things every single day. It is not <laughs> home often. So thank you so much. It's a pleasure. Um, this is Nir Sarosi, the EVP of Interscope and Geffen a and um, And this is, whoop. yes, whoop, bravo. Whoop. Yeah, bravo. And this is global superstar, hey. Sofia Reyes. Bravo. And rather than to go through their whole bio, I just kind of want to throw them a question and allow them to talk about, you know, their history and what they've done. Um, so I'll start with you. All right, you go for mind. it, please. Uh, let's see. How did you get involved in music? Why Latin music? And what are the challenges that you encountered in Latin music? And how did you get here? Four questions in one. Okay, yeah. I love it. So and many questions. All of them okay, or okay. one? Okay. Or... All right. So... The business side was easy because I was always fascinated by the business aspect of, of music. The Latin isn't that obvious. So I was born in Israel and I was born and raised in Israel. And before moving to the States, I spent a few years in Venezuela. Um, I was not interested in Latin music. Um, and, but that, that's how I got introduced to the, to the culture. I moved to the States for school and my roommates were Latinos, were Mexican, and my friends were, were Latinos. So I couldn't shake you guys off. So- um, How would you want to? <laughs> so I, I moved to LA after school. I started music business. And so again, I, it was clearly wanted to be in the business, but you know, Latin, I just didn't grow up with Latin music necessarily. Uh, but it kept dragging me back in. And um, it's just at one point I just kind of, I just gave in and, Wow, I just really became super passionate about it. And now I just, I, I can't imagine not, you know, not, not doing it. So I think, you know, it's, it's like part of, of who I am. Um, I started in music publishing. Then I segued into the label uh, sector. I worked at EMI, then at Sony. I, I ran Sony uh, Latin um, for a few years. And now I'm at Interscope. So that's kind of been my, my, my curve. 
curve. Yeah. Nice. And, but I need to answer the question. <laughs> oh, you didn't answer uh, any my question. OCD. Right, exactly. Oh, so wait, so okay. we, got, we got that, we we'll got the challenge, right? Yes, and the challenge. So the challenge, so interesting, when I started in the late 90s, the big challenge was, you know, Latin America was a sub-market of the general market, right? So, you know, some of these, some of our artists were selling millions of records and were selling out huge arenas. But it was very difficult to, you know, we sit in front of a general market media or brands. It was very hard to kind of explain and educate them about the power of, of the artist and the power of the consumer. It was still kind of, kind of untapped and that was really frustrating. Um, that was back then. Luckily, a lot has changed. Um, uh, now it's, it's the other way around. Everybody, you know, everybody is cl clear about the power of Latin music uh, on a global um, scale. So, but starting out for many years, it was, it was a big frustration for all of us in the, in the industry. Yeah, was there another question that I missed? Uh, let's see. I think I got it. All I right. think you got okay, it. Okay, good. You're brilliant. Okay. <laughs> Sophia, same question for you. How did you get into <clears throat> Latin music? Why Latin music? And um, how would you describe this moment as a Latina artist? Of course. Um, first of all, I'm so happy to be here. Thank you guys for, for having me, the whole team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Honestly, it's such, I, I feel honored to, to be here with you guys. I admire, I admire you so much. Um, and well, I'm from Monterrey, Mexico. I moved, yes, from north, del norte. Regia. Regia. I moved to LA when I was 17. I'm 24 years old now. And I moved with my independent label, Bacab Records. Charlie and Paloma are my managers. They're around there. Bravo. And we started everything together and we moved to LA. You know, working with um, producer friends, songwriters, and um, I released a couple songs as an independent, and then I signed and I, I did this partnership with uh, Warner Music Latina. Um, that was maybe when I was 18, so that was like six years ago, which is time flies, it's crazy. And um, that's been basically my career. I started with Warner, been releasing a couple songs, one after the other. It's been so, so exciting. I've been said, I was telling um, Nira and Marjorie that I'm in a very exciting uh, moment in my life where I'm finding who I am as a person and who I am as an artist. Um, really, I have this thing for me that whatever you believe in, you'll create anything that you want. You can make it happen if you really believe it. Um, so my thing is like, so be careful what you wish for. Like, where is that coming from? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm in this place where I just want to do everything from love and be authentic and I, you know, have fun. I feel like this is my mantra right, right now. Like have fun, do it from love. We're here for the people. And I don't know, it's, it's been a really fun journey. It's just the beginning for many, many things. And it's, it's beautiful for me to be Mexican. I love going Everywhere, and I love when people ask me, like, What's, what, where's your accent from? And I'm like, Mexico, and I keep t talking about my culture, and I love it. And for me, it's an honor to represent uh, Mexicans, Latinos, and, and women. I think we're in a very, very special and, and powerful and beautiful moment where we're, like, holding our hands, and we're, we're elevating each other, we're speaking, uh, we're supporting each other. And, you know, being a woman, Mexican, in this industry, it's, it's amazing. It's a challenge. But I love it, and I'm I'm ready for for whatever's yeah. to come. Yeah. Um, so I'm gonna come back to you because we're we're talking about where you're at now. Mm -hmm. You're at Interscope. You raised some eyebrows because everyone said, "Wait a minute, Nier's been at Sony Latin." Mm -hmm. You know, there's there's basically there's three main you know places right. that you would go to normally, or or yeah. in the past you would go to. Warner Latina, Sony Latin, right. or you go to Universal Music Latin. Those or are your Warner, three, yeah. yeah, your three homes, your three potential homes. You are now at Interscope, which is not a traditionally mm. Latin label. Why Interscope? How did you end up there? So I felt that with the growth of, of Latin music and, and also artists like, like Sofia experiencing international and, and global success, there was... Uh, there was, a, let's say, an, an option that was missing in the market, which is a label where Latin expertise and general market expertise converge. Mm -hmm. um, so a place where that can provide an opportunity for one of our artists to, you know, if you you got to start with, you know, with your home turf on the Latin side, but you also have the tools that, you know, once you get there, and when we're talking about crossover, I mean, you have the tools in-house 
um, that any general market artist um, has at, uh, at their disposal. So it was an idea. And when we sat down with, uh, with John Janik and, and Joey Manda from, from, um, from Interscope, they, I mean, we, we kind of had the same, the same vision and um, that's where we are. We've, so, you know, to be clear, we were not in a scope, I'm not in a scope land. We decided let's take that out. That's what keeps that. segregating us. Mm -hmm. So we're in a scope, an artist that signs, a Latin artist that signs to in a scope, signs to in a scope, not in a scope land. So mm -hmm. um, it's, I mean, Warner, so I mean, these, the, the companies you mentioned, they're great labels and there's great independent uh, companies, but our world has really grown. There's so much talent out there. So again, having diversity as far as, as, as options for a, a partner when you're an artist, um, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's something different, a different offering. So that's, that's pretty much how it came about. I what, love it. What about when you're looking, cause I'm, maybe there's some art, are there any recording artists here present? Okay. Nice. Got, got some. I mean, what are, what are some of the things that if you're, so you're here at Interscope and you have this, all this growth and all this, mm -hmm. you know, wealth of knowledge around you, what are you looking for? What do you now, you know, when you're looking at an artist, when you're evaluating an artist, are you looking for someone who's bilingual? Are you looking for somebody who can live in both worlds? Are you looking for, what are you looking for? It's funny, when you actually set out to look for something specific, you never find it. <laughs> <laughs> it just it just kind of comes. Um, you know, Interscope has always been about moving culture, right? The first artist was Gerardo Rico Suave. Anybody remember? Yeah. So it was a Latin oh, artist, Ecuadorian, yeah. So, <laughs> Yeah, so there's no set criteria, you know, it's all about, you know, finding the talent and it, it can come from different places. And I mean, being, you know, having the potential to cross over isn't, you know, isn't like a, like a part of the criteria. Again, it's, it's just having all these tools available. So when you, an artist comes in and you, you, you're able to maximize that, that talent and, and the potential, but you know, it's all about great music and ultimately mm -hmm. artists that move culture and artists that connect. So that's our, that's our premise. Yeah. yeah. And someone like you, Sofia, who you sing in Spanish, you sing in English, you have been featured on tracks from global artists from other countries. How do you, how do you, how do you maintain your global status, but also maintain your culture, sort of live in both worlds as somebody who's an artist? Yeah, of course. I mean, when it comes to music, for me, music is just a matter of express expression and it has no boundaries. And it's just this is what I want to sing. This is what I want to do. I want to put it out there. And it still represents me. I mean, obviously, I grew up I grew up in, in Mexico, but I grew up listening to music in English and music in different languages and and. <clears throat> maybe I'll release a song where I learn Italian and why not? I actually have a song in Italian. Who am I? Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> Whatever. Yeah. And I feel like music is music and it has a power to communicate and to connect with people. And that's the beauty of it. And um, maybe when I started my career and I released my first bilingual song, people would be like, why are you Mexican and why are you singing in English? You should be singing in Spanish, represent your culture. And I feel like there's a disconnection there. there it has nothing to do because I am more Mexican than any other, like I'm super Mexican, you know, <laughs> super, super Mexican. Like all my traditions, the way I speak, the way I am, my family, my friends, most of my friends here are, are, are Mexican because just that's just the way I, mm -hmm. you know. Connection. Exactly. And that's just the way I see it. And it's it, music. That's the beauty of music. It's just okay. to communicate and it can be in any language. And, and also me as a pop artist, being able to play a, a little bit more with like Latin sounds and EDM and like play around with all these sounds and cultures is like, I feel so passionate about it. Um, I love discovering new sounds, working with new people. I love collaborating with, with artists because that's just how the world is. Mm -hmm. And I will always keep doing it. I love it. I love yeah. it. Yeah. And it seems kind of natural too, because Latin music is such, there's so many sub genres in Latin music and it, and it is sort of like, you can, you can be in versus being a, you know, a non-Latin uh, artist where you can do like one album, you can do mariachi. Yeah. The next album, you can have a pure mm -hmm. pop album. And the next album, you can do yeah. whatever else you want to do. And then, you know, there's a lot of, um, a lot of ways that you can move through, mm -hmm. you know, Spanish music. Um, 
you know, and you sort of touched on going into different languages. Everyone used to talk about crossing over. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That was the big thing many years ago. You know, Shakira did it. uh, J-Lo did it. And now I feel like there's more crossing in. Is that, (laughs) is that, you know, like where you have like, where you have the, the, the English speaking artists who are now coming in and singing in Spanish, not even, you know, even speaking Spanish, but they, they're speaking it on our tracks. Is that, is that where we're going? Is that what the vision of, you know, do you see that happening more now? And it's, what it's, does that mean? It's, no, it's happening. It's happening more. Um, and also we have musically like common uh, platforms. Like, for example, trap is really big in our world. And that's, you know, it, it, it's parallel to what happens in, in the U.S. And actually every, every major market in every European, Germany, Italy, uh, France, they have their local trap markets. And at its uh, at its core, it's it's kind of it comes from the same place, so it kind of it resonates, you know. Mm-hmm. And um, so, and of course, the other urban influences, reggaeton, which comes from the Caribbean, and but it's all connected to to Africa. It's, it's I mean, it's it, music is really becoming more universal, so it's easier for let's say a German market, an American artist, to understand some of these some of these beats. Um, mm-hmm. So it's it's naturally. You know, just musically, it's it's more organic. But oh, you know, again, the power of Latin music. And you look in the, at the, the global charts, and you have multiple um, singles, Latin singles in Spanish on on the charts. And internationally. Internationally, right? On the on the global, right? Yeah. So you know, it, it, you know, artists, most artists do their homework. They they know who's who, and you know, so we're on the map. So yeah. it's definitely attracting a lot of non non Latinos to to our, our world, and it's it's gonna it's gonna keep happening now. It doesn't always work, right? Like you can have, you see like songs oh, with big yeah. names and then it's like, it Just because you can, work. maybe you should. Yeah, I mean, it's, <laughs> it's not mathematical. Yeah. Um, and it shouldn't mm-hmm. be mathematical. It's, it, it's, gotta, it's gotta mesh and it's gotta make sense. It's gotta be culturally relevant. It just can't yeah. be one plus yeah. one. But it's gonna happen more and it's, it's a beautiful thing. It's yeah. it's a conduit both ways. Yeah. You know, it's all, so artists now speak in terms of audiences, right? It's like, I know who my audience is. I know who your audience is. If we get together, then you know we, you know we cross pollinate. So it's mm-hmm. uh, it's beautiful because I know artists are actually thinking those terms. Um, it's it's great. That it kind of helps the entire conversation. Yeah, yeah. Well, let's talk about that a little bit too because you're saying you know it's 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 playing in different parts of the country. Um, you're gathering you know information. There's data that's that's at your right. disposal. How are you using that? How does a label use that versus like you as an artist? How are you using the information that you're getting from Spotify, the information that you're getting from YouTube, who mm-hmm. your listeners are? How is that guiding the choices that you're making from the label's perspective and from the artist's perspective? Right. So if you go back, uh, when we used to market, I sucked. I hated it. It was because it was really pushing, right? I mean, we didn't have information about the consumer. So we pushing it's like, it's like, who's the, the biggest, bigger bully who can yell louder, right? So it's about piercing through, mm-hmm. but really we, we resort to mass marketing because we didn't have information about the consumer. Now everything changed, you know, with, with social media, that, that the gap between the artist and the, and the fan, it's, it's closed. They're having direct conversations. So it's now, and you have data between social media and the music platforms. You you know who the consumer is, the demographics, the preferences, mm-hmm. the tastes, gender, like right. gender, everything. Right, you you know. So it's it's about building an audience. When you set out, you have a new artist. You go, I have no fans. How do you get from one to hundred to a thousand to to ten to to a million? It's it's exponential, mm-hmm. and you know that's the product pushing the product. Once you have the audience, it's easy because you know that you have a captive, a ca- captive listener, right? But um, your focus is how can I gain more and more fans? And you know very quickly when, you, when you're when you deploying a campaign, you know quickly if it's working or not. Mm-hmm. If people don't like a song, mm-hmm. I mean, and it's got to be uncomfortable right, as an artist because you know right away, you just go on, you know, on the YouTube video uh, you know, on the page and you're, you know, you, you can tell what, what, uh, the sentiment is, is right away. Mm-hmm. It's good. It's also a bit stressful. Yeah. Right. I'm assuming as, as an artist, right? For sure. No, for the sure. Data available you the, to the, you? the good with the, the, good bad, and the right? bad. It yeah. goes, everything goes, I feel like with balance and it's been a really interesting process for me as well. 
I mean, that process, actually. Because I have, there's a song that I have with, um, actually, culturally wise, is it's amazing with uh, De La Ghetto and Jason Derulo. And this song got almost to 600, I'm so bad with numbers in English, 600 billion streams. 600 billion streams? I think that makes sense. 600 million? Millones. Millones. Million. 600 million, no, which is... I said billion? Lot. No, that's yeah. too much. Yeah. That's crazy. Imagine. Like, I'm like, um, what? We need more money. No. Exactly. Like, mm, but that's uh, much that 600 million, million streams, which is, massive. you know, it's, it's a massive. lot. No, it's massive. Um, and obviously for me as an artist and my label and my team and everybody... You know, it, it got really scary to release a song after that one because you obviously want to always beat it, beat it, beat it. Um, and all my energy was put into like, how can I make a bigger song? And, you know, and then I released a couple songs after, which have done great. They've been successful, but not to the point of Unos Tres. Um, and I just like there's I decided to not put that stress on me to that because in my whole career, I'm going to release music that will become bigger songs and smaller songs or like it will get to more people or not. And I feel like it's just um, the way that's always going to be and whatever I'll write, it's going to touch and the people it has to to touch. Wow. And yeah, it's it was a process for me to like let go and put the energy in the right things instead of like, you know. So using the data, but also not letting it influence your music exactly. and what you felt you wanted to release. Obviously, and like song after song, I always realized like, okay, this song, I really love it, but it, it just um, didn't work out for people as much as I thought it was going to be. So I start analyzing the why and what happened with this song and what happened with this one and how can I keep writing one from... Obviously, the business side, where it's like, okay, you have to be intelligent, blah, blah, blah. But also, like, who am I as an artist right now? Because Un, Dos, Tres, I wrote it three years ago, and it's not who I am right now. So it's like, we're constantly changing and evolving, and it's playing that game of, like, the balance, mm -hmm. you know? That, and it's, it's yeah. hard. It takes, yeah. yeah. And it also must be hard from, from the label's perspective, because mm. you have your data, and so somebody, you know, an artist comes in and you say, mm, I don't know if that's going to work. Or I mean, how do you how do you balance being supportive of the artist's right to release the music that they're passionate about, but also have a commercial yeah. track that can play in radio? Or maybe it's less important now because streaming is just exploded. And, you know, and for us, it's, it's such a significant, yeah. you know, form of income versus physical. So how do you... How do you balance? Look, that? I mean, it's it's a partnership. So, I, I had somebody ask me like, okay, so how does it work? If I bring ten songs and you know we disagree on all of them, you know who wins? It's like I feel like it, I don't ask you that. Huh? <laughs> I feel like I know who asked you. Yeah, that. <laughs> maybe. Um, but I'm like, this that's just a weird question to begin with because the answer is you're going to win because you're the artist. Now, we will sit down and I will. I will talk, we'll talk about the expectations for each one of these, you know. I, I, that's what you have to reconcile. I mean, it's yeah. okay if, if as an artist, yeah. you know, you have, there's a record you want to put out. Uh, let's, okay, but let's talk about what it means, what it's going to mean in, in the market. You go through a logical stuff. It's like, is it going to get playlisted or not because of the, of the format? Mm -hmm. um, I, but I'm, 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 I'm against telling an artist, don't do it. Mm -hmm. Because that's that's just you're 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 missing the depth of the conversation. I mean, you, you mm -hmm. know, like mm -hmm. Sophia, you you're here for the the long haul, right? And yeah. you're going to have moments where you want to express yourself. Mm -hmm. And you know, every time somebody stops you from that, then it's it, it kind of chips away from from you. And at the end, yeah. of, look, you don't want to have a disgruntled uh, artist. You don't want an artist to make a, a mistake. But again, in this partnership, you you have conversations. I've never had an issue where somebody's like. I want to put this out. No, we're canning it. That that that, that sounds like a like an old record industry movie. Um, yeah. I, I, we don't. <laughs> You're it doesn't on the happen. Shelf. But no. But there's <laughs> look. And, and the truth is, I, I never have the absolute answer. I might be wrong, and I am prepared to be wrong. I will make a mistake. You will make we a all mistake. Are. Yeah. And you have to come to terms with it. And but it, it's not. You can't just let that that fear mm -hmm. stop you. Mm -hmm. You just, the most important thing is perseverance. 
totally. That's that's really it because you know, look at uh, look at our friend Balvin. You know, yeah, who's he on can it? have three four songs that don't do that well, and, and but he keep on, and then right. So yeah, it doesn't matter. Well, like it, do, it really doesn't matter. It doesn't. It doesn't matter. I mean, yeah. you can't. You cannot make make up the, the consumer's mind. They'll make their own. And, um, you know, sometimes you'll, you'll have a hit and sometimes you won't. And it's okay. And it's okay. Yeah. And I also feel like, the, um, at least for me, picturing this, I feel like as an artist or as a creator, to have a number one song all around the world, like the biggest song, but that has nothing to do with your creativity and who you are, must be the scariest thing ever. At least I fear of that, like I really don't want to be in that position because then people will expect some type of music or some type of things and it has nothing to do with who you are and on, on the long run you won't be happy, you won't be fulfilled and we're just here to create and make the music that we love and put it out there for the people and keep doing that and well, one will become, as you just said, huge and then maybe some others won't but it's, that's not the... You know, it, it becomes purpose. a burden, and uh, exactly. I, I've learned a lesson with, with Mark Anthony. I was a huge Mark fan. Actually, the first Latin artist I, I, I fell in love with was Mark, and I had the the, the fortune to, to uh, um, the honor to work with him. And I'm like, I ask him, Dude, how come you do like eight, nine songs albums? Like, you know, like, and you take like, for, like, what what is your process when I first met him? Hmm. And he was like, 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 you gotta understand, like, you gotta, I, I gotta, like, make love to the song, you know, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta <laughs> eat it, I gotta drink it, I gotta sleep it, you know, because, like, listen, I, I gotta live with it for the next 30 years, like, I don't wanna go on stage and have to do a song that I know no. I have to do, because if I don't do it, people are gonna be, you know, pissed off. That I don't feel so. Yeah. Totally, it's like it's, it becomes a burden, right? You have yeah. this hit, and it's like you're like, okay, let me take a shot so I can do this song, right? Yeah. So no, yeah. So no, um, yeah, yeah it, I get it. Like so, you know, for Mark, it's like every single song. I I have to be able to perform this now in ten years, in thirty years, yeah. and feel it, and 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 you know, that's like you got a, you got a good point. That's 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 super disciplined, and that's why Mark is Mark. Yeah, exactly. Awesome. Totally. Let me let me just ask one last question. Then I want to take questions because I think it's important to hear what you guys would like to hear from us. But um, seventy percent of Latinos follow artists on social media. Mm. Sophia, you have on Instagram. You have one point eight million followers. That's just your Instagram. Mm -hmm. well, how to and and you also? Well, I'll, I'll get to you. But what? I have sixteen thousand. You have how many? I have how many do you have? Mm. <laughs> but you get to swipe up after ten, so this is great. You get to swipe up. Um, <laughs> very important. Um, how do you use your social media? Like, how is that a part of the tools that you now have? So we have all this data from Instagram. We have all this data from YouTube. Um, how do, how is that? important to you mm -hmm. in a way to connect with your fans of course well it's definitely a tool for me if it wouldn't be for a tool i wouldn't be on instagram at all like um and and i mean it's a for me if i see it in that way it's probably the best thing that could have ever happened in my eight like um how can I say, like, in my career and time and space, you know, because years before, you know, artists didn't have this tool. And by one post, by one tweet, by one whatever, you can reach the whole world. So for me, it's obviously very important what I'm going to say, what I'm going to post um, every time. I don't do anything like just like that. Um, and I, I do all my social media. For me, it's really important that I'm the one communicating with my people, that I'm the one sharing how I feel. Um, it's definitely been a process for me to, in, to, to understand it because I'm so bad with like technology, like the worst. So every time they upgrade it, I'm like, ah, here we go again. <laughs> I, yeah, it's, it's, it's been a process, but I see it as a very incredible tool. And yeah, it's important yeah. for me that I'm the one. And what about you as, you know, on the label? Because I've heard, <laughs> I've heard people say on the label side, like, I like your artists, but where's the social media interaction? Where are the posts? Where are the, you know, is, do you feel like it's important that, that that is already established? Like, is that when you see somebody, a new artist, you like the music, but the interaction is low on social media, the numbers are low, the followers are low, the street, like, how does that, 
influence you in signing somebody or even how like do you push them to do more because that is an effective real tool mm. on the league so socials it's a metric um i'm old school like when i when i i'm passionate about something it's because i'm passionate about about the artist and 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 you know what's behind it i'm i'm, I'm more of a gut type of an executive which mm-hmm. is which is old school i look i look at the numbers but numbers can lie because it, it, I mean, there's, you know, social media is not for everybody. I mean, some people do better and, you know, some people do great on TikTok, for example, um, and not do well on, on Instagram. So it's a tool, like Sophia said. Um, and yes, I mean, it's, 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 it's a, a very transparent way of, of gaining direct fans and, and, and an audience, but like you can't force yeah, you know, that's what. Yeah, it, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's but it's like it's like it's like everything in life. Like, you know, you want to become a better tennis player. You want to. You sh- you should work at it. I but see it as a work. Exactly. It shouldn't become a test. You must do it. Mm. I mean, if you don't, if it's not who you are, then you know, find a different way. Yeah. Or, yeah. Then if it doesn't come natural, then it's like uh, some people write, some people don't write. They, so they use uh, you know. Yeah. You go. You you work with other writers. You know, so it's it's it drives me crazy when I hear people just kind of sticking to you. You know, you don't have enough followers, and you're not behaving mm-hmm. the same way this other so. person. Yeah, but it's it's so personal. You know, yes. like you you can tell when somebody, you know, when it's a reflection of Actually. somebody's right. You know, we we have we we, we have Lele Pons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's Lele is uh, of course a natural. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but not everybody is is like uh, is like Lele, and you can try to try to push that. So. Um, so on, 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 as far as like identifying talent, it's a metric, but I don't, that's not my Bible. Um, and as far as like, you know, like forcing artists, again, you just try to make them use the tool to the best of their ability. And if not, you, you, you just, you work with it. You know, that, that can be, yeah. you know, you're, you're not worthy because you don't do well no, on social. Right. That's, that's what I was going to yeah. say. Cause for me, it was like a struggle every time. Like, why don't I have two point million, you know, and I would spend so much time on that. And then I realized that it's not as natural for me than uh, for Lele to like post. Cause all their thinking is, okay, I'm going to do this because I'm going to share this to social media and that's their life. And they do it and they kill it and they're great. Um, and I would see other artists that would have millions of followers and they would never post anything. And I was like, there is no equation. Like, there's no, you know, yeah. I would get so no frustrated. Formula no formula, exactly. Yeah. And I think it's just, it goes back to, like, don't force it and post whatever you want to post instead yeah. of, like, you have to, you know? Um, and, and that, for me, has been, like, great. Yeah, it's, yeah. and I'll just say this. It's people really now, now obsessed with looking left and right or what everybody else is doing. It, it, yeah. It's so stressful. So... Look, looking left and right is good if you're gaining best practices. I mean, it's to Inspiration. learn. Inspiration. Right. But at some point, you just have to kind of look at your own path, put the blinders on, and just and just go and, and be you. Yeah. Otherwise, you're just going to go crazy. Yeah. Right? Totally. Yeah. Totally. Totally. Well, before they play, you know, that... That Oscars music playing us out. Could we take a couple of questions? Is that okay? Oh, that's okay. No, we don't have time. Oh, do we? Can we do one? Can we do one? Sofia, hablaste mucho. (laughs) Hablamos mucho. Okay, we'll do one. Really? Okay. Like with Latinos, you know? Yeah. Um, (laughs) Hi, my name's Jacqueline. Hi, Jacqueline. I have a question for all of you. Um, You kind of mentioned this, um, but given like when it comes to building community and like you have a platform as an artist, like you have examples like um, like Bad Bunny, for example, and, and Jimmy Kimmel. He was like, Incredible. a trans woman who was murdered in Puerto Rico. Yeah. Even people that still argue like what we should use as a label for the, the Latinx community. Like if you define it as brown, Latin, Latin, Latino, or whatever, you know, label it is. Like what, you, like how are you using your platform to kind of talk about these issues? It is, it, who wants to take it first? We're like, Neil. well, I, I mean, I can, I can do a very short answer to that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think with my clients, um, because those are things that matter to me, and I, um, I expose certain things to my clients sometimes, and I, and I feel like the the things that matter to them, they will, they, you know, and, and if it's genuinely something that they want to be involved in, they are. Um, for instance, Juanes went and did this amazing. Um, concert 
uh, in front of a jail in Arizona. And this was very impactful with John Legend and the, you know, and for people who were being detained there. And it was an important, passionate thing for him. Mm -hmm. But it has to come from a genuine place. Exactly. Um, because if it doesn't, it, it, it really, I mean, you could see that Bad Bunny, his passion is Puerto Rico. His passion is, you know, uh, f you know he, he believes in what he says and he says it in every single way. He wears the clothing. He, like you said, he, you know, he had the name of, of, of the person who was murdered. Um, and if it, and if it's not, si no le nace, if it's not inside, you know it. And so they have to, be, and, and, and I feel like we as, like me as an attorney, I encourage those things. I want them to evolve because I, I believe in it too, that the platform, it's nobody care. My 2000 followers do not care what I say most of the time, but they will care somebody who has 40 million followers. Mm -hmm. And it might lead to raising funds for an organization that they're passionate about. And I think it's, it's asking, and you'd be surprised. You'd be surprised that they will be willing to do things. They just are not really asked that often because people assume that they're not interested too. Mm -hmm. I, might, yeah. I echo that, no? Yeah, you agree? No, no yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you agree? Agree? Yeah, yeah, we agree. Yeah, but it's an excellent question, and it is becoming more important, especially now. Well, thank you so much, thank everyone. You. Thank you for allowing us to be here. We're so happy.